Hello, my name is Don Alcoholic, and uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, stepping in for our speaker today. Uh, so um, I'm just going to go over some stuff really quick. I'm starting on page 59 right now, which is uh, if I look, if when I look on page 59, and I look at the title of the book, it says how it works. And, and what I learned through the uh, time that I've been in the program, Bill's very poignant on um, the naming of the chapters, right? He's serious about that. He's really letting you know. So if I don't know the, the material contained in the chapter, how it works, I probably don't know how it works. I'm doing something else. And, and um, for me, I, I, I take this book very seriously, literally, you know, so uh, in almost all the stuff, I can only find a couple strange things that don't make sense to me throughout all the literature. So basically what I discovered is there's um, 103 pages plus the doctor's opinion, which are the program of recovery, right? Um, starting you know, with the doctor's opinion, the eight pages, and then the uh, 103. And, and at, at page 103, all this stuff stops. There, there's other things after that, but they're not really part of the program. But if on 59, if we look at, uh, um, I thought Steve was going to have me talk on three, but uh, actually, let's go over to page 65, rather, and let's look at the fourth step and, and what Bill has uh, given us. So let's look at that layout. Well, let's actually, let's go over to page uh, 64 right next to it on the last paragraph where it says resentment is the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics than anything else. From it stem all sorts of spiritual disease, for we have not only been mentally and physically ill, we have been spiritually sick. So I, uh, when the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically. So the spiritual malady, you know, uh, some of us have different ideas of what that might be. But, you know, in, in, my, in, in my case, it's a combination of, of the obsession, obsession, and the allergy, if I'm still using back in the day, right? So that definitely is going to cause some type of spiritual disconnect. Um, I think the, my experience is through this psychological or mental psychological, which is going to uh, inventory something interesting. It's going to inventory my emotions. Let's look at the word resentment, which, you know, I, I don't know what you guys know or don't know. So I'm just going to kind of talk basic um, or what you've experienced or have experienced yet in the program. So resentment to, is a Greek word. It means re, again, feel, sent, sent, S-E-N-T, to re-feel again. So like when I sit down and do my four-step part of the 10th step at night or in the morning, sometimes I don't hit it at night. I, hit, I, I carry it over in the morning because I'm too tired or what have you, or I'm doing some type of activity and I think I don't need to do it, which is silly. But um, what I'm really doing is, is having some type of emotional hangover, resent, to refeel, right? So uh, Bill, it's interesting. And when you look at Dr. Silkworth and his writings, uh, he's talking about he, he's been trying, and also uh, Dr. Young, he says he's trying to create some type of emotional rearrangements. Right. He says the methods I've employed have been successful with other people, but I've never been talking about rolling. I've never been successful uh, with an alcoholic of your description. Well, so let's look at what we're going to what the book tells me to uh, inventory. One, resentment. That's an emotion. Two, fear. That's an emotion. Three, harms. So a, no a more normal person. Uh, might have a lot of remorse and guilt from harm from the harms that they've uh, um, uh, got involved with, you know, the wrong actions that they've taken with their instincts, right? So, um, like I, I say all the time, I don't do I don't do guilt very well, which is probably good for me, or I wouldn't be here. I I beat myself up too much. I just don't, you know, from the life that, that I led, I, I can't. It's too, it's just too crazy. So let's look, but let's look even more closely at, at what he said. So he's, we're going to use his examples. Um, where it's, this is on 65, right above the the, uh, the the rows or columns or whatever you want to call them. It says, we were usually, and I put always, as definite as, as this example. It says, I'm resentful at Brown. Why? His attention to my wife. So it don't tell us, did he look at her? Did he talk to her? Or, you know, is he going over and seeing her? We don't know, right? And And I don't have the guys and, and girls I take to the, uh, to the process 
write out any big thing in there because it's just to trigger them or to let them know or remind them or give them the courage to be able to say whatever it is to me as their step guide at the time, right? So it says it's intentional, but but over here uh, on the what we what some people would call the third column, it says sex relations, self-esteem, right? And then of course it's got bracket on the right hand side, it's got fear, which is emotion. So let's look at what sex relations is. That's part of our instinctual package, right? So basically, and a lot of us learned this from Joe and Charlie. I know I did. Uh, I have three basic instincts. I have a social, a security, and a sex instinct, right? Which are perfectly natural and right and I'm supposed to have. But somebody like me can way overuse it or way underuse it or use it not properly, right? And that's what causes the problems that I have. Uh, so um, any problem that I've ever had in the past, any seemingly problem I might be having today and any ones I'll be having in the future have something to do with my instincts, my social, my security, or my sex instinct. So it's imperative for me at least to know about my instincts. How am I gonna know about, how am I, how am I gonna know about the four, the four step? We could talk about it all day. How did I know about sex? We can talk about it all day, but until you actually get down in the pit and handle some, you really don't know, right? The, the four steps the same way. How I'm gonna learn about it is by doing it. And, and Bill has adequately put that 10th step in there to where if you, if the way that I glean this book, I'm supposed to be doing that every day. Do I do it every day? No, but I probably do it, you know, 350 times out of the year. There's some days that I don't. But where I sit and meditate, I have, I have my little sheets there so I can write down whatever situations may come up. For the first five or six or seven years, I, I put down there, if nothing came up, if I didn't have any resentment or a bunch of fear or whatever, I would just put great day, put a little smiley face. But I always log something in. Paper's cheap, our lives aren't. The, the spirit of the universe has, has graced us to have this body so that apparently have some kind of experience within ourselves and with each other um uh and so you know for me to uh just throw that away is silly with the information that i've learned from this book and from the program and from being around people like you guys i've learned a lot from all of us and, and all of us doing this together it wouldn't be very fun if we're just doing it by ourselves so the next one he talks about uh brown he told my my wife of my oh anyway it, let's go instead of going doing that let's go over to page 67 really quick and let's look at another part what we would call the uh fourth column or the fourth row i call it the fourth row it said halfway down it says referring to the list again putting out of our minds the wrongs others have done we resolutely look for our own mistakes where had we been selfish dishonest self-seeking and frightened now, now, for the first few years, I wondered why they wrote this way back over in there. And, and I go, well, it, it could have fit on that page. They could have made they could have made a smaller. At first, I thought it wouldn't fit, but no, they could have put it on that page easily, right? They could have just made the font smaller and made it work. But in, in my experience, and what I think is they put that back there because that has really not a lot to do with this situation here. So let me give you an example. Uh, Somebody's talking to my wife and, you know, I get resentful, you know, my social instinct, uh, my, my, per, my personal relationships with that person, my high self-esteem, it'd be high self-esteem with me. We, we need to find out where we come from and my pride would be affected and my emotional security. So in a more normal day, that would just blow past me, right? I, I won't attach any emotion to the, what's going on with my wife, but when I attach that motion, emotion to this situation, it can blow those instincts way out of uh, their purpose. And, and so what, what happens is when I say attach something to it, so either I reacted or made a choice to be selfish or both in this situation, right? Most of the time for me, it's just a reaction. I don't notice that I'm in that resentment until I'm already into it. And, that, and you know, of course, uh, I'm very good at rationalization and I can, uh, you know, I can rationalize anything. So like my, what I've learned for me is 
rationalization, rationalization just like anger, something to be used very sparingly, like a, a, a couple of sentences of rationalization. Once I start going any further than that, I'm making a mess out of it because it seems that there's some kind of entity that has almost perfect control of this world so or this realm that we're living in so that I can have the experience that I need to have. And uh, in some cases, it would seem that uh, we've made agreements or with something or someone or maybe even each other in previous existences so that we can have these um, experiences that we're having today, you know, and the experiences that we'll have tomorrow for, for some reason. Uh, I could go further to say the reason why I'm still in this body is because I haven't uh, prepared myself or I don't have enough experience to be able to uh, uh, survive in the next round. And once I've gleaned or gained that understanding and those experiences, I'll probably drop out of this body and, for the next experience. And, and right here, you know, I, I think that's what's going on. Anyway, back to, the, back to the instincts. I love what it says in the 12 and 12. It says, creation gave us instincts for a purpose. Without them, we wouldn't be complete human beings. It, you know, if men uh, didn't care for each other, didn't construct shelter, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't remember. I'm just paraphrasing, you know, what it said. But Bill's very explicit. That's the very first paragraph in step four. I, I, I think Bill really wanted us to use instincts in our inventory. Um, my experience is this. I, I, went, I grew up in church. I went to church the whole time to where, you know, um, well, let me say it this way. I've been to meetings for a while, and especially at the noon meetings, you see them guys that have that little white little thing in their collar right there. So if, conf if this was just a confession and, and offered any more than a confession, why would those people be coming to AA? They could just confess at, their, at whatever denomination or tradition they're at, and they'd be fine. So obviously, the steps of AA offer more than just a confession, right? I'm going to find, instead of just telling on myself, I want to find out why it happened. What do I mean when I say why it happened? I mean, which instincts were involved? Was it my social? Was it my security? Was it my sex instinct? Was it the ambitions thereof, those instincts? Was it any combination of those three in any, any particular uh, array, right? These are the things that I need to know. Why? Why do I need to know that? So when I step into that arena again, or a similar type of situation happens, I will know how to handle it. Uh, it, it I, 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 I use it like this sometimes. Like if we were in war and there was a minefield and the, each individual mine is a representation of my instincts, wouldn't it be pretty cool if I had a map and knew where all, where all the mines were? I'd probably get through the situation pretty well. But if I walk in that minefield and I don't have a map, chances are I'm gonna blow my legs off or more, right? And that's what the instincts offer me as, as a practitioner of the book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't know if Tebow, whoever helped build out just part of the uh, program, beautiful, couldn't be any better, right? The instincts explain, I call this the psychological part of our program. I'm gonna find out why my thinking has grabbed onto these emotions in a wrong way and caused all the problems in my life. So um, it, it, let's, go, uh, let's go down. To, so, the, so the other thing I want to point out is that uh, where it says I'm resentful at, we're back on, we're still on page 65. And it says, Mr. Brown, his attention to my wife. So that's one resentment he has. Another resentment is number two, told my wife of my mistress. That'd probably piss me off too. Uh, so there's another one. And then three, Brown may get the job at the office. So he didn't put them all in the same uh, uh, column go, or the same box going across. Or if you're writing it long form or however you want to do it, you want, you know, but I, uh, um, he wrote them separately. Why? Why did he write? Why didn't he, why don't I just have my sponsors just write it all in one thing and then move on? Because it'll be different instincts involved in each individual situation in most cases, right? And I need, and 
my best bet is to know exactly why I'm having these uh, emotional uh, upheavals so that I can, uh, like I said, not step on their minds anymore. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see, let's go back over to page 64 at the bottom. And where we left off, it says in dealing, we're about one, two, three, four, five, on the last paragraph down, one, two, three, four, five, six sentences down. It says in dealing with resentments, we set them on paper. I can't tell you how many times people call me up on the phone. Oh, you're not going to believe what happened. My wife, I go, whoa, 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 hold it, hold it. Did you write that down yet? Right, 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 right. Did you write that? Write that down and call me back. Do you know what? 90% of the time, they don't even call me back because they wrote it down. Or they'll, they'll talk to me the next day, you know, and, and we'll go over it. I'll, you know, because a lot of guys, are every, especially when they're newer, I'll have a, get with them every week and we'll go over whatever resentments, fears, or harms that they've um, uh, uh, written down, right? Because they realize what the problem is, right? That's how powerful this process is. That's why, that's why Alcoholics Anonymous is probably the most successful 12-step program there ever will be because none of the other ones, unless they're using this book, incorporate the instincts. I remember uh, about 15, 20 years ago, they had a, uh, they had a, a program called Emotions Anonymous. And so, as I pointed out earlier, that we're actually um, um, inventorying emotions. So you could call this program that too, right? And that program did pretty well for a while till what? Uh, and you guys were around back then till they made their own book. They wrote their own book. Their own book did not have this inventory process in it. It had some other inventory process. I don't, I haven't heard of it. I don't think that, I don't think that's around anymore. I think it's gone, right? I think that, uh, um, uh, there's Derek, I think. I think that uh, uh, that's how important this is. So anyway, a lot of people get real uh, into that six, page 67, what we call the fourth column. You're really um, putting a lot of energy somewhere it don't need to be, because that's a given. If I got a resentment, I'm selfish and frightened. If I got a fear, I'm selfish and frightened. I don't even need to. I don't need to know what it is. I am, right? There's nothing to do there. It all has to do with this instinctual part. Nope. So let's see what it says. We listed people, institutions, or principles with whom we were angry. So you, I get guys all the time that say, well, that happened a long time ago. I got it all figured out. So, so my, my, my uh, react, my, what I'm going to say about that is that if you even can remember that, you, you need to write it down. Why? Because we've got lots of paper and I got lots of time. And, and we, we should go over that just in case, just in case it's not fully settled. All right. Uh, we asked ourselves, look at this word. We asked whom we were angry, not still, not necessarily still, were, were angry. We asked ourselves why we were angry. In most cases, we found it was our self-esteem, our pocketbooks, our ambitions, our personal relations, including sex, were hurt or threatened. Oh, you mean to tell me that it does, doesn't even necessarily have to be true? Let me ask you a question. If if I think that my significant other is cheating on me and she's really not, does it matter? Am I going to react any more any differently? No. Because if I believe, if I believe it or I even suspise, I have a suspicion that that's going on, my instincts are going to be activated and I'm going to have the same reaction, whether it's true or not. It's amazing this uh this uh, experience that we're having. All right. Uh um, including set were hurt or threatened. Yes. Yeah. So we were sore. We, why do you think it keeps using that word were? Because a lot of us think we got it all figured out and we don't need to write it down. Like I said, there's lots of paper. On a grudge list, we said opposite each name, each name, our injuries. Was it our self-esteem? 
our security, our, our ambitions, our personal, our sex relations, which had been interfered with. Hmm. All right, so let's, uh, I, I, could, I could beat that to death, but uh, the instincts part of this program is imperative. Let's go to the bottom of 65. We went back to our lives. When did our lives start? When we were born. So as far back as I can remember, we went back to our lives. Nothing counted but thoroughness and honesty. When we were finished, we considered it carefully. The first thing apparent was this world and its people were often quite wrong. To conclude that others were wrong was as far as most of us ever got. Absolutely my problem. I, I can blame everything on you in a second. And I'm going to be miserable. That's what I said about that justification shit. I can blame. I can blame it all. Right. Uh, the usual outcome was that people continued to wrong us, and we stayed sore. Have you ever noticed when you're resentful at somebody that all of a sudden you become resentful at everybody and everything, or they start sticking like a Velcro to you? You have one resentment, then you got another, and I don't want to make an amend to that person because they did this, that, and that. And then you got another, and then you got, and then you're, and then I'm just a mess, right? I got all this stuff going on. So I have this, I have this rule of thumb when I go to bed at night and, and I write down whatever resentment I might have or whatever fear or whatever harm. If I have a harm, I already know I'm going to go make an amend, but whatever resentment or fear, well, it, with my resentment, if I go, if I go, I do my, I, I write it down. I set it to the side. I, I do my prayers. I do my 11 step and my, and here's, here's my measuring stick. When I wake up in the morning, if I'm still thinking about that situation in any type of, uh, with any type of emotional hangover, I'm going to go through the rest of the pro process. What do I mean? The rest of the process, I'm going to call my step guide. I'm going to tell them about it or go by there, depending on the situation. Uh, I'm going to come and do the rest of my fifth step for that hour, you know, why, why am I doing that? Why, why do I need an hour after the fifth step? Because it's the, it's, it's the most important time in, in the whole program, because between that hour and the sixth step, what happens in, in, in the way that I, I experienced the steps is I'm going to figure out exactly which instincts are evolved, right? And I'm gonna laugh at myself one more time because I let my instincts trick me into believing, making this big deal out of seemingly nothing, right? But why do I, why, why am I really doing that hour? Besides just getting right with me and getting right with the universe, because this is, this is most important. I'm preparing myself in that hour and in the sixth step to, to go do what? To go make my amend, right? That's what I'm doing in that hour. I'm putting my instincts all in order. So when I go make my amend, I'm not making an amend for Don. Don's made perfectly in the image of likeness of his creator, just as you are. You are a perfect being. You, we're so fortunate to be experienced as body at this place in time. It's my character, my role that I'm playing that was out of line, that I learned from my instincts. That is what I'm making my amend for, is for my character or who, what I'm supposed to be, or if you will, my instincts not being used correctly. That's what I'm doing during that time, hopefully. Because I ask people that, well, what do you do during the sixth step? Oh, I just sit there. I mean, not, I, could, I could put that time to a lot better use. You know, a lot of people just say, well, I just pray, I just pray. If I could just pray this shit away, I wouldn't even need to come and do none of this stuff. You know, some of you guys are a lot more spiritual than me, but I, I just can't pray this away. That's why, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm going to continue to stay here because I don't know how to do this stuff through my own thinking. I, when, 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 I, when I got some good smoke and resentments, and, and I don't get them too often anymore, but I do. You know, I, I imagine I'll have two or three good ones this year. We'll see. All right. Let's see. Uh, sometimes it was remorse. And then we stayed, then we were sore at ourselves. But the more we fought and tried to have our way, the worse matters got. The more I tried to rearrange my instincts. That's where the really the letting go um, comes into place. That's what it really means. Step six is a huge, huge step. It's the whole program. 
If I could just do step six without doing the instinctual part, I would do that, but I can't. I, I need to know why. Some of you all might be able to do that. Some of you guys are very good at that. I, I, I'm not. But as in war, the victor only seemed to win. Our moments of triumph were short-lived. Think about the wars we've been in just recently. Have we won any of them? Any of them? Probably not. It's a mess. So that's what I said. And, and the war that I'm, that I'm talking about is the war between my ears, right? To where I'm blaming you for all my problems. I'm blaming you. If you hadn't have done that, and if that hadn't happened and all this kind of, it, it's a waste of time. It's just like anger. Am I supposed to have anger? Of course. But anger should only be used for a second. And then I'll divert that energy, that emotion to a, something more viable to, uh, to, so that I can become free. You know, it'll point me to some type of corrective measure, perhaps. It'll point me to where I might be able to say something on a higher plane to someone else so that we can, so that, the, that this energy isn't going but from me, uh, emanating from me towards that person. All right. Our moments of triumph were very, very short lived. So it says it's plain to it's plain that a life which includes deep resentment leads only to futility and unhappiness. To the precise extent that we permit these, do we squander the hours that might have been worthwhile? But with the alcoholic, whose hope is the maintenance and growth of what? A spiritual experience. Maintenance and growth of spirits. This business of resentment is infinitely grave. We found that it is fatal. I, lo I, love, I love the wording that Al Bill wrote the 12th step. You know, having had, already had a spiritual awakening. And he, and he tells me, he clarifies exactly what he's talking about with those six words as a result of these steps. And the steps he's talking about specifically are probably going to be, in my experience, they are steps four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the beauty, the beauty of, of steps four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, over at my ashram or my, my, my ashram or my mosque or my church or whatever, I might have some beautiful spiritual experiences. And, and it might have relieved me of my alcoholism, right? But here's the situation with that. How, if I get into trouble again, how am I going to recreate that situation? How am I going to recreate that? Because that happened when I was at a program when I was praying and meditating with everybody and I saw the light and everything happened. And, you know, I, I was in utopia for a period of time, maybe months, years or whatever. But, if, but that's what's so beautiful about this book. It's plain. It's simple uh, um, that anyone can understand if they take the time. If I do steps four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, I'll become free again. Am I going to step in that shit again and, 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 and put myself in bondage? Of course I am, right? Of course I'm going to let my instincts, I don't want to, but of course my instincts are going to run my life for a period of time. But it's been my experience, and I've been doing this for a while, that every time that that's happened, all I, to recreate that freedom, all I have to do is do my fourth step, find out what instincts are involved in that. My fifth step, tell my step that I go to, go to six, go to seven, which is nothing more than a prayer and a beautiful prayer. And then go do my ninth step and write it. I don't usually, I don't usually write it on the list anymore because I don't get a bunch at a time. Let's talk about that beautiful prayer, the seven step prayer. You know, where it says, I pray that you remove from me Every defect of character which stands in my use stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Right there in that prayer, Bill Wilson tells us what our character defects are. Anything that stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. You know, we have these debates about what that might be. All the information's here, you know, uh, you know, and, and it, it takes a while probably for us to uh to uh, you know, maybe a a couple, three years or whatever. Some people are a lot more uh, studious than I am. It took me a little while to uh, really um, figure out what was going on with the steps. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, 
But with the alcohol, so yeah, here we go. Uh, we found that it's fatal. Uh, this business of resentment is infinitely grave. We found it is fatal for when harboring such feelings, we shut ourselves off from the sunlight of the spirit. So what's that word harboring mean? That mean that's like uh, when we, um, can you guys still hear me? Okay. I hope so. Uh, a harbor is something that shelters a boat, right? So what we do is we get a resentment towards something or somebody and we'll harbor that thing and we'll, we'll just protect it and, you know, just keep it going and make sure that, you know, we can just build it up and all this kind of stuff. This is a horrible thing to do. I hope, we, I hope that we never have to experience anything like that again. Hello? 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 Hmm. All right. The insanity of alcohol returns if we drink again. What are they talking about when they say the insanity of alcohol? They're talking about the uh, mental obsession returns and we drink again. And with us to drink is to die. If we were to live, we had to be free of anger. Anger is just another word for resentment. The grouch and the brainstorm were not for us. They may be the dubious luxury of normal men, but for alcoholics, these things are poison. We turn back to our list again, for it hold the key to the future. We were prepared to look at it from an entirely different angle, where <clears throat> we begin to see that the world and its people really dominated us. In that state, the wrongdoings of others, fancied or real, like I said earlier, whether it's true or not, had the power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these resentments must be mastered, but how? We could not wish them away any more than, in, any more than alcohol. This was our course. We realized that the people <clears throat> who wronged us were perhaps spiritually sick. Though we did not like their symptoms and the way they disturbed us, like they, like ourselves, were sick too. And here's the prayer. We ask God to help us show them the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. When a person offended, we said to him, God save us from being angry, thy will be done. So there's my four step prayers. So uh, I guess this is when you usually stop. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. We can hear you. We can hear you, Don. I think it's on mine. We can hear you, Don. Uh, kicking. Uh, is this is this what time we usually stop? We're still waiting for Derek to get in. He's trying to log in right now. He's having trouble. <laughs> you, you're muted, uh, Kikan. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I guess I guess we does anybody have any questions or any statements they'd like to talk about on the four step? I didn't know I was gonna to have to bloviate for just how long of a period. <laughs> Look. You, you did it. Come on, D. Let's go, baby. You did it really good, Don. You did good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anyway, we we'll see. We'll see you when. Would you like to 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 end it with a prayer or something?